and welcome back to Moon Clan. My name is Rossi, and today I am picking up exactly where I left off last time. So in last episode, we had a few different graduations and Frost Whisper did get another strike for being kind of pro kitty pet. He also did get injured with a mangled leg, so we'll be recovering for probably most of this episode. Fingers crossed as we move into leaf fall, that means it'll be a little bit more relaxing, but this game likes to surprise me, so that is probably not going to happen, but we can keep our fingers crossed. Uh, without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into it this time. We are heading into moon 66 for the clan and 65 for us. We share fresh kill with our former mentor, their stories of the past filling the air. That's awkward because Coyote Path was our mentor and she is gone. We participate in a battle against a rival clan. Claws clash around you. Adrenaline rushes through your body as you hurl yourself into the fray. I imagine, if anything, that's either River Clan because we've had some bad luck running into them. Or Clay Clan, because we did find a cat by their border dead pretty recently. We're currently sharing tongues with Moscum. We're hissing at Blossom Current over something small, though. Moonfern, Frost, Whisper, and Falcon Scratch take a sun bath and have a little small talk. An icy paw finds the way we act increasingly uncomfortable. I'm really not liking this trend of all of the little kits and apprentices not liking us. It doesn't bode well for things. Liar Rush's soreness is gone. Snowy's infection is gone. Now he just quote unquote has a broken bone. Chirpback got green cough. Poppy Paw caught a cat from another clan trespassing on our territory and their ear was torn in the ensuing scuffle. I mean, Poppy Paw does seem pretty over eager, so it doesn't surprise me that she would defend the borders with such vehemence. Especially since she's so far back in her training, she probably is looking for any excuse to get her warrior name a bit sooner. Scorchpaw has gotten a stomachache. Palefur and Liar Rush had a huge fight and broke up. We just got them together, too. Icy Paw always seems to have Hesperus flowers stuck in their fur. What does that look like? Ooh, pretty. There you go. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's going on with the clan. Yarasar saw a kitty pet sitting calmly next to a dog. Coltrick is sharing words of wisdom with a confused apprentice. Swanspot is checking up on the warriors. And the hell petal is thinking about a strange shoelig object they've seen. We're currently playing a prank on Icy Paw. That normally means we patrol, but obviously we can't if we have a mangled leg. And maybe that's part of the reason Icy Paw is getting uncomfortable. If we're playing pranks and kind of pushing boundaries, then maybe that just doesn't feel very good on Icy Paw's end. Or maybe we're not listening to them if they're saying no. Which isn't a good thing to do. Don't do that. Falcon Scratch is playing a prank on Needledew. We are talking to him. Falcon Scratch smiles at us. Hello, Frost Whisper. Want to come sit with me? We sit next to them. They pause for a second looking at us. Whenever we talk, I feel like there's a lot more going on inside you than you ever let anyone see. Is that true? I feel like Falcon Scratch is the kind of cat we could be very close friends with. He just seems to be so calm and understanding. And the relationship there definitely seems to kind of reflect that. Though he does like us more than we like him because, of course, Blossom Current is playing a prank on Moscone. Unfortunately, we are insulting her. Careful, your jealousy is showing. I'm glad they are at least starting to have comebacks now instead of just crying. Chirpback is being admired by many clanmates for their recent feats. I think that's really nice to see. I know he was definitely getting pushed really hard for a while there. So I do like to think that the clan is starting to realize exactly what he's contributing and hopefully that encourages him to take it easy while he's sick with green cough. Moscone saw a pair of two legs near camp today. Uh, he is a dreamwalker. I don't remember seeing that before. 
but with that kind of a trait, that could really mean that it opens up an avenue of friendship for us because we can maybe even take on a mentorship role for him. Moscone is gazing into the puddle apprehensively. My pal was making fun of my nose earlier. I know they were only joking, but still, now that thought's in my head, I can't get it out. Do you think there's something wrong with it? No, I'm sure it's just as cute as any other kitty cat knows. I wonder what sort of things uh, cats might make fun of each other for. Having a pink nose, not having a pink nose. Shape, size, I don't know. Fierce face was named last episode. He's currently wishing they were still in their nest sleeping. Poppy Paw is talking back to their mentor. She does not seem like she's had a very easy time settling into the apprentice role, period. But even at the kind of older age, when you think she'd start being a bit more mature, it just hasn't settled in. It could kind of tie into insecurity as she's being very mindful about being so far behind. But in any case, uh, poor Moscone has really had their work cut out for them with her. I see Paws playing a prank on Charred Rumble. And even with their very pretty new flowers, we are insulting him. Remember, the same moon shines down on all of us. I feel like that would have to be like one of Moon Clan's mottos because, you know, dark and moon. <laughs> So it's probably just a reminder or a little teaching about looking for similarities and remembering your clan mates or only cats do, so don't murder them if you have an issue with them. And yeah. Moonfern is seeking guidance from Star Clan for the young ones. We are talking to her too. Late at night when they think you're sleeping, Moonfern sneaks into the medicine den and sits beside your nest. Please, Star Clam, please help Frost Whisper get better. They have to get better. I was supposed to protect them. I was supposed to keep them safe without them. I. Overcome with emotion, Moonfern races out of the den. I don't know how she could have protected us on patrol, especially. But that's really sweet. I really wish we reciprocated some of that feeling for her. It's so sad that it's just a constant like crush from afar with a uh, frost whisper that or everyone just hates him there's like no one between during a game of moss ball when it's rabbit kids starting to catch they hesitate and shrink back as the ball flies their way courage minus one char rumble is considering how to foster camaraderie among kits from different litters soon they might honestly have an empty nest here because rabbit kits five moons during Charred Rumble's lecture on clan history, Rabbit Kit is completely engrossed, adding insightful questions that Charred Rumble tries their best to answer. And Rabbit Kit is pretending to be clan leader. Okay. Want more interaction this moon, but that's fine. It does make sense since we're kind of sitting around camp anyway. Let's go ahead and do the patrols. Obviously, there won't be any life gen until we're better, though. Swan Spot isn't successful in gathering Tansy. But Hill Petal does gather some Elaine. Weasel Reed suggests it could be a good chance for the cats to practice new hunting techniques with the apprentices present. Everyone has a nice practice session, picking up on a few new tricks to try out on their next hunting patrol. I say Paw gets really into it and is praised for their focus and enthusiasm. I really hope that um, Scorch Paw kind of learned something from I see Paw's demeanor, just because Scorch Paw has been really, really aggressive lately. Moscow suggests it could be a good chance for them to practice new fighting techniques with Poppy Paw. And both cats actually have a nice practice session, Poppy Paw soaking up all of their best tips and tricks. We are still doing pretty good on Prey at 353 pieces out of a needed 84, but I'm gonna go back to splitting a bit more evenly between Border and Hunting. Now that we're moving back into Leaf Fall and Leaf Fair, I'm sure pickings are gonna get a bit more slim again. While walking along the border, our patrol notices a Clay Clan patrol renewing their scent marks ahead. If we had more traits that were like rash or oblivious or, you know, fierce or fighting, then I would antagonize here just because we did find a cat dead on their border not too long ago. 
but since we're kind of a level-headed crowd here, we're at least likely to antagonize, we'll proceed. Once the patrols cross paths, Lightpal is quick to break the awkward atmosphere with a friendly greeting. We pause to converse for a little while, Lightpal bringing up a story that, while slightly embarrassing for them, is entertaining and lighthearted. The patrols part in good spirit, improving your relationship. Alright. The patrol set off with a spring in their step to go hunting, and not only does Fawnchalk personally catch a terrifying amount of prey, but they offer up support to everyone else to do the same. The patrol brings back a truly awe-inspiring haul home. A huge amount of prey is brought back. Let's see how much. Wow, 415 pieces of prey. We were just in like the 300s. So that will definitely help us to really fare there. Our patrol hears a cat begging for their house folk to come back, just barely legible over the sound of the monster speeding away. We definitely have an excess of prey, and it's not yet leaf bare, so we can recruit them. Unfortunately, we don't arrive to them at time, and we send a silent prayer up for the kitty pet who is hit by a monster on the thunder path. And our reputation towards outsiders has worsened through no fault of our own. And that's it for our patrols for this moon. Alright, let's go ahead and then dive right on into moon 67 for the clan then. Nothing interesting happened this moon. Okay then. Yarasar stands above the clan and claims that Poppy Paw shall now be known as Poppy Eye, honoring their flexibility. Poppy Eye is not necessarily a bad name. Maybe not the most fitting. Rabbit loudly complains as Pitch and Flick pulls them over to quickly groom their pelt. They manage to wriggle away and scurry off to the front of the crowd for their ceremony, where they are renamed to Rabbit Paw and apprentice to Moscone. Okay, so Moscone gets uh, Poppy Paw to Poppy Eye and immediately gets Rabbit Kit, now Rabbit Paw. I guess uh, Yarosar sees something very special in Moscone as a potential tutor or mentor. Frost Whisper feels safe with Snowleaf around. I'm glad you do, because nobody else does. Frost Whisper wishes they could get their pelt to shine like Poppy Paws. And Fawnshock thinks that we're being annoying. We probably are, let's be honest. Oh, that's rough though. That being said, it looks like that crush around Snowleaf is definitely going to be getting fostered a little bit more. I can't help but feel like some of that regard for ourselves versus others is kind of tied back to Snowleaf. Just in the sense I feel like after that crush was noticed or formed, I feel like a lot more cats found us insufferable. That could be just total coincidence, but it definitely feels like it's a trend that's been going on. Blossom Current's heat exhaustion has abated. Poppy Paws for an ear is healed. And Scorchpaw no longer has a stomach ache. White Pelt was seen chasing a rogue off of the territory, which is good. And Rabbit Paw is caught breaking the warrior code. That is a very serious infraction, and I imagine normally there'd be some very dire consequences for that. But Rabbit Paw was just named apprentice, so. I feel like she'll get a little bit more wiggle room than others might have if, say, like a more seasoned warrior had um, been caught breaking the code, then that could have just been immediate exile. But Rabbit Paw will get a break. Speaking of Rabbit Paw, though, this is what she looks like. A little bit more grown up. I really like this light orange. It's so pretty. She saw a two-leg kit playing with a kitty pet. She grew to be vengeful, set slightly, and oddly resourceful. AKA, she sounds terrifying, <laughs> honestly. Despite her name being very innocent sounding, I can definitely see her being potentially another maple shade if events turn out wrong. So fingers crossed, uh, she grows to become something a little bit nicer than vengeful. And uh, still capable, but less likely to use that against others. Hopefully. Here's Poppy Eye. She's currently wanting to compliment Needledew's fighting techniques. She's troublesome, but a trusted advisor. 
I wonder how that exactly would look, so probably very likely to complain or similar, but has good insight is kind of how I see that playing out. They were mentored by Moscow and who influenced them to be more likely to put others at ease, adapt easily, and avoid a fight. Moscone helped them become better at providing insight, and when they graduated, they were honored for their flexibility, graduating late at 15 moons old. Not as late as it could have been, though. Yarasar is currently asking Scorchpaw to teach them how to swim. Very interesting that Scorchpaw might know and Yarasar doesn't. I guess we could always interpret it the other way, too. Holtrick is climbing into trees to get a different perspective. Okay, that's one way to do it. Swanspot is running low on Miles Spile. I feel like we're running pretty low on a lot of things since our entire store was destroyed quite a while ago now. I think it's still been affecting us. Herb stores are small, but enough for now. That'll have to be enough. Hill Petal is refusing to share gossip at the Half Moon meeting. It's a pretty common uh, trait for him, it seems. Oh, Pigeon Flick is giving us some advice. It's been a little while, so let's actually talk to her. There you are, Frost Whisper. I just came to let you know Scorch Ball left you some of your favorite prey at the Fresh Kill pile. Though they unfortunately had to perform some other kind of task and can't stay around to look after it. If you're currently busy, I can watch it for you and make sure no one else takes it if you'd like. Thought Scorch Ball hated us. They put, like, dung in it or something. <laughs> It looks like we're having a good day, despite everything. Weasel Reed is also giving us some advice. Maybe we're kind of happy that so many cats are talking to us. Or maybe we're just generally feeling better and a lot of cats are taking it upon themselves to give us advice about how to get better faster. I could totally see that being a contributing thing, too. Uh, but we'll go and talk to him, too. It's been a bit. Oh, hi, Frost Whisper. You want to speak to me? Sure, I suppose. I'm not busy. The clan has been well recently, hasn't it? Pigeon Flick seemed in a pleasant mood, judging from the slight spring in their set. I'm genuinely glad for them. The days is ours for the taking, and I'm glad everyone's ready for it. Yeah? Things are going a little too well now, it seems. <laughs> Snowleaf is daydreaming about being a warrior and tiger clan. Oh, I didn't realize that we were going to be sitting in the medicine cat den injured together, so plenty of time for us to be, you know, talking and hanging out and getting to know another better. For better and for worse in that respect. Definitely not enough yet for anyone to ask anyone out, which is what we're waiting for here. <laughs> but fingers crossed, uh, he doesn't do anything too rash. But Snowleaf is currently daydreaming about being a warrior in Tiger Clan, and we are talking to him. Snowleaf glowers off into the distance, seemingly deep in thought. Clearly, they don't want to chat right now, and we decide to leave them alone. Sometimes that's a good skill to know how to have. Chestnut Pell is sorting pebbles by size for fun. Hey, there aren't that many games I imagine cats can play, so... If that's something that passes the time, it passes the time. Pawnshock is offering silent support. I wonder to whom or for what, and unfortunately we are insulting her. We may not always see eye to eye, but we're part of the same clan. Let's put our differences aside. That's also what I would like to do, but sadly this is a challenge I have set out. Scorchpaw showing off their new battle move, very possibly for the sake of Rabbit Kit, whether that's to try and maybe catch their eye, or just to show off because they're an older apprentice. Who knows? I see Paul meanwhile is playing a prank on Raven Song. Now I forgot to talk to Poppy Eye, who's wanting to compliment Edeldew's fighting technique. We are arguing with her. You're just mad I'm funnier than you, aren't ya? You're honestly probably more popular, too. So yes, we can be mad about that then, right? Moonfern is feeling the weight of responsibility in shaping young minds and spirits. And there's no one for her to shape right now. Charred Rumble is staring intensely at the entrance of camp, falling into her downtime duty of being camp guard. 
I don't really know what moon ferns would be. Maybe helping out the medicine cat. Kind of makes sense in that sense. And obviously no light gen patrols, so we'll jump straight into normal patrols. Swamp Spot gathers some cobweb. As Hill Petal is padding through the territory, they feel a presence join them. But the connection wavers, and the feeling of company... As quickly as the feeling of company appears, it vanishes. Mosco is surprised when Rapidpaw makes a mistake on a simple move Mosco thought they had mastered. Before Mosco can say anything, Rapidpaw runs out of the training grounds. When Mosco finds them huddled in camp, they sob out confession. They will never be ready to be a warrior. Okay, for starters, it's not surprising that you don't immediately excel when you start something, even if you are showing good traits of that at the beginning. I know it's one of our nursery things with Rabbit was that they were performing as well as an apprentice at like four moons old. Just because you showed early promise does not mean you should be putting undue pressure on yourself. But Moscone's heart lurches seeing the apprentice so low. Could Moscone have done something to make Rabbitpaw feel this way? Not having any words, Moscone sits close, wrapping their tail around them. Moscone purrs softly, reassuringly, until Rabbitpaw purrs back gratefully. Maybe there is something there for Moscone to be a good mentor for. Trailing behind the patrol, there's a massive crash above Icy Pond. They look around wildly just as the world is blotted out by a tangle of heavy falling branches. It's been a while since we've had this, luckily, but hopefully no injury. As Scorchpaw really has patience for other cats, Icypaw tells them harshly they don't have time for some idiot who got stuck, making Scorchpaw resentful as they pulled himself out from under the branches. But at least Icypaw wasn't hurt. And once again, the cats head out to spring in their sep, and they come back with a huge amount of prey. The hunting is easy, and the company is good. <laughs> so now we're at 428 pieces of prey. We'll take it. Our next patrol, however, stumbles across a large dog wandering in the middle of the territory. We can't leave a threat like that alone, so we have to proceed. Wirerush selflessly throws himself into the fight, and every time the dog tries to grab at their clanmates, they're there with their claws. Fur puffed out to twice their normal size. With Wirerush defending them, the patrol drives the dog off, yowling triumphantly. Our next forward patrol spots a badger making a den on Bliss Clan territory. This isn't a cat, or this isn't a clan that we're like at war with or anything. We're not likely to antagonize, and if anything, we'd probably consider them friends, so let's just proceed. We wait patiently at the border for a cat to appear, but we're out of luck that day. Sky Scratch decides to continue the patrol as they have tried waiting long enough. Okay, I mean, it's neutral, it doesn't ultimately matter. And we sent out a few different hunting patrols, only getting a little bit of prey, so nothing too exciting, but sometimes that's not a bad thing. All right, and let's go ahead and jump into our last moon of the episode. Ross Whisper's leg seems to be much better. We've gotten a running nose, though. Danger lurks near the camp. With a low growl, we alert our clanmates, ready to protect our home. That's okay, too. As long as the danger did not actually harm or kill anybody, then that's all that really matters. Frost Whisper has drawn the ire of Turp back by deliberately taking the last of their favorite nesting materials for themselves. Why are we being like this? We saw Fawn Shock the other day, but didn't get a chance to meow hello. Blossom Current Needle Dew and ourselves have a nice hawk while eating. That's probably one of the better moons we've had in a while, and obviously we still are insulting somebody. Okay. Colesap has gotten White Cough. Needle Dew has gotten a stomach ache. Blossom Current's tail is feeling much better, but they got their paw stuck in a two leg trap. And while they eventually escape, their leg is heavily injured. This is a lot. I don't know why this has been such a trend lately, where a cat like gets kind of grievously injured, recovers immediately back to the den for something or another, though. Turpback has recovered from green cough. Poppy Eye fought a rogue, and while they drove the trespasser away, they need to be rushed to the medicine den afterwards. Ooh, we'll see how hurt they are. 
Okay, it looks like it's just a claw wound. Honestly, with that kind of a description, I thought it was going to be something more like broken bone <laughs> or even a cat bite. But, you know, we'll take a claw wound and hope it doesn't get infected. The Bliss Clan messing cat comes asking if our clan has raspberry to spare. However, we only have enough for ourselves, so we refuse to share. I mean, have you seen her stores lately? It is not good. Frost Whisper's leg seems to be much better. And that we've gotten a running nose, so same news there. Rabbit Paw was seen arguing and borderline fighting with a cat from River Clan. Once again, this would be considered a strike on an older cat. But Rabbit Paw escapes uh, without issue as they are just an apprentice and can make those mistakes and learn. It's kind of not a good start, however, that each moon so far they've been an apprentice, they have gotten into dire trouble. So hopefully they actually learn as an apprentice. Uh, Bliss Clan's news again there. And there's such happiness in the promises they make to each other. Golsap and Pigeon Flick leap into their new life as mates without question or hesitation. Though I did notice that crush on Pigeon Flick uh, before, but I'm happy that it's actually mutual and they did it on their own. Poppy Paws, or Poppy Eye now, seems to have spotted orange ladybugs and has decided to snag one as a pet. Ooh, we're definitely going to be adding that as an accessory. And then Rabbit Paw again. All right, let's start off with uh, getting that little ladybug. Aw, it's like resting on her. It looks like it kind of just stays resting on her even when uh, she's healthy, so that's cute. That looks huge, though. And just so we know, this is Pigeon Flick and Golsat's uh, current love for each other, so they are definitely very fond of one another. Golsap is currently batting at their tail, and Pigeon Flick is praying to Star Clan that next season will be a good one. I mean, it seems like a pretty good start when you actually find, you know, a mate that reciprocates your feelings like that. Alright, let's see how the clan's doing. Yarostar saw a pair of two legs near camp today. Cold Shriek is eavesdropping on Comfrey Foot. Swanspot is daydreaming about being a warrior in Leopard Clan. And Hill Petal is checking up on the warriors. We're currently trying to set a good example for younger cats, but nothing specific there, so no desired patrols. Weasel Reed is currently considering multiple outcomes before making a decision. Ravensong is listening to stories about Bite Spec. Now that's a name we haven't heard in a while. Needledew wants to critique Snowy's fighting techniques. We are talking to her. Hey Frost, let's forget out of this one. What happens when a tree falls into the mud? It leaves an impression, haha. <laughs> hey, where are you going? We're going away to laugh at your joke, Needledew was a very good one. Bonchak is craving a taste of shrew. We are actually talking to her. Can't you see I'm busy? I mean, after the past few moons, that is valid. Blossom Current saw a two-legged kit playing with a kitty pet. We are talking to her. We threaten to report Blossom Current to the deputy unless they return an item they sold to you. Hey, go right ahead. There's nothing in the Warrior Code against petty theft. Yes, of course I have the entire Warrior Code memorized. Do you have any idea how many loopholes in it I've been able to exploit over the moons? Only an amateur wouldn't know about the rules they're trying to break. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, when you stop and think about it, there's a lot of things that one would consider moral that the warrior code does not specifically outline. So I guess if we are following the warrior code to a T, like Blossom Current says, that leaves a lot to be desired at the end of the day. Chirpback is having a good day, and sadly we're going to try and ruin it. I'd be more offended if I respected your opinion. Okay, these guys actually have responses now. Fierce Face is wanting to compliment Sky Scratch's fighting technique. I mean, Sky Scratch is definitely one of the senior warriors now. She probably has a good few tricks up her sleeve for a cat that's bold and fierce. Rabbit Paw is determined to master a hunting technique by dusk. You know, I definitely think ambitious could have been a good trait for her because I get the sensation that she is putting 
a lot of unfair pressure on herself to achieve and excel. And again, if she can't maintain those standards for herself because they're unreasonable, I really hope that she doesn't, you know, fall behind or go down a darker path. Moonfern is currently contemplating the ancient tales to pass on to the next generation. And Charter Rumble is helping mediate minor, squ minor squabbles between the non-existent kits we have. Alright, but we're feeling better, so we can go back to life gen patrols. During a hunting patrol, we spot a large plum squirrel. But it's close to Goose Clan border and crossing it could lead to a skirmish. Oh, let's not proceed. We decide to respect the border and lead the squirrel. The claymates commend us for respecting the warrior code. Now that's more of what we need right now. Swanspot gathers some moss for us. And Hill Petal is distracted by a possible vision from their hunt from cobwebs. Needledew suggests it could be a good chance to practice hunting techniques with the apprentices present. But nobody sets up to teach. Weasel Reed, however, takes Scorchpaw out for some one-on-one -on -one fighting practice. They both have a nice practice session with Scorchpaw soaking up all Weasel Reed's best tips and tricks. Okay, we are going on um, our government mandated border patrol and we have encountered a gang of rogues. The rogues are terrifyingly coordinated and are quick to use the patrol's momentary surprise to their advantage. The cats are picked off one by one, only a couple managing to escape the slaughter. Chestnut Pelt passes away. Okay. With that particular prompt, I'm glad that it wasn't more cats, because with something like that, you know, it could have been no cats walking away from that fight. Yarosar was leading that patrol, and we had so many fighting traits that I thought we were going to be just fine with four cats. I'm going to assume that those very traits are what kept most of the cats safe. But Chestnut Pelt, being a former medicine cat with not as much experience, not as much prowess, was probably unfortunately targeted and overwhelmed and had no way to defend herself. So honestly, that's really sad. I honestly loved her as a medicine cat. We just couldn't keep her on because of her kids. And her kids are probably going to be devastated that their mother is gone. As well they should be. I know it was, you know, kind of a situation of self-preservation, but I am still a little disappointed that Yarostar didn't try and do more for Chestnut Pelt too. Okay, we're going on a slightly larger border patrol. When we see a badger making den on another clan's territory. Coltrick tells the patrol to continue on, hops over the border to walk to their camp. They agree at the entrance with bristled fur, angry hisses, and later demanding to know what they're doing there. They explain the situation with their smooth talking skills and manage to convince the cats of their good intentions. The leader thanks them and offers the patrol to escort them back to the border. Does improve our relations, but I think that's a good concrete example of just how manipulative or how good of a talker cold tree can really be and once again the cats head out with a spring in their step and come back with a huge amount of prey and the rest of our hunting missions are equally successful we're ending off with almost 500 pieces of prey out of a needed 84.5 which is absolutely crazy we are not even going to need to hunt during winter time at that rate it's just unfortunately we, unfortunate that we can't actually recruit cats during winter as we have plenty to spare even with everything but we'll go ahead and leave that off here for today thank you all so much for watching i hope you are enjoying even for the more relaxing episodes like today but until next time Feel free to check out links in the description below for links to other social media as well as alternate ways to potentially support me if you feel so inclined. As I know, commissions are open, but they may be a little bit delayed due to some moving issues I'm currently going through. So please do bear that in mind if that crosses your path or strikes your fancy. 
Thank you, Parentalina, especially for supporting the channel, as that is greatly appreciated. But otherwise, everybody, until next time, stay safe, stay happy. I'll see you all then, and bye!